Hello, Anikod here and this time I'm here with a complete farming guide covering everything from components, fertilizer, wiring everything up and even plant genetics all within 10 minutes, hopefully. You know I don't like to waste your time so let's get straight into it. If you want to skip to a certain part of the video I've put the timestamps down below so you can go straight to that bit. First of all you'll need a way to gather water. For years we've had a few different ways and the most popular one was probably setting up next to a river. This is probably still your best option, however it's not always possible. In this case you can use a large or small water catcher. They've been modified slightly with the update to allow a water in and a water out widget. The large water catcher costs 500 wood, 200 frag and 2 tarp and creates 20 millilitres per second. The small water catcher costs 100 wood, 50 metal frags and 1 tarp, so much cheaper and that also creates 20 millilitre per second. Whoa, wait a minute, so why the price hike? Well, that's because the large catcher can hold much more. It's definitely worth the cost if you've got the space for it. This is what they look like, and you place them outside to catch water. With a pipe tool, which costs five high qual, you can see the input and the output widgets. The pipe tool works exactly the same as the wire tool, by the way. The input is on the left hand side, and the output is the tap at the front. If you open the container you can see a bar which shows you how much water is currently in the catcher. To link them together all you have to do is put the output of one into the input of another. If you try and link so the water drains uphill you will require a pump to do it and this is the warning you get so the game literally guides you so you don't get it wrong. If you link the other way around so the water goes downhill you won't need a pump just like real life. If you stand back you can see what's uphill and what's downhill so you know if you require a pump or not. Now a pump looks like this and also costs 5 high qual. You'll need one of these. I'm going to pump the water from the catchers into an indoor bowser. These bowsers are really cheap at 250 wood and one tarp. Now pumping the water somewhere safe stops people from pinching it and you can do it from the safety of your own home. I'll show you how to do this very soon but for the minute I'm just showing you the basic function of it. You will notice the Bowser looks slightly different too. It also has an input and an output widget and as you can see it's currently empty. So we're going to get the water pumping up into the Bowser from the catchers. Simply put the output of the catcher, the tap into the input of the pump and then the output of the pump into the input of the Bowser. Just imagine you're linking the tap of the catcher into the top of the Bowser with a pump in the middle. That's all we're doing. It's really simple. Pump. You will need to get your electricity skills polished up here because the pump does require electricity to run. There's three widgets in the top. There's pump on, pump off and pump power. We're not going to get into automatic watering in this video, we'll save that for a later video. If it is something you want to see, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll get straight to it. However, I want to keep it nice and simple, relatively short for this video. So we just need to put power to the pump power widget. I'm just going to note as well that I'm not wiring this up efficiently, I'm just showing you the function. So please don't freak out. Once it's got power, flick the switch and it'll work its magic. You can see the catcher draining and if we go to the Bowser you can see it filling up. Pretty cool. Now from here we need to transfer the water from the Bowser to the sprinkler system. So the sprinklers are really simple and work very similar to lights in the sense that they can be put on the ceiling and have a water in and a pass through. They cost da -da -da -da, 5 high qual and you can place them on the walls, on the floor. The best place I've found is obviously the ceiling. Now you can't just link the Bowser to the sprinklers, you will need a pump. While I'm here I'm going to show you a pretty useless tool. Um, that you will come across and it's the fluid splitter. At this moment don't bother getting one of these. Remember the sprinklers have a pass through and these don't cost water whereas the pipe splitter costs one water. You just don't need it. It looks like this and it's supposed to split one water into three separate output streams. Similar to an electrical branch. If you really want to use it you'll need a pump and wire the sprinklers up separate. Again the sprinklers have passed through so there's not much point in using this. So let's get building the end product. I'm going to link more catches together, put these into my pump, and this will give more water and help fill the Bowser up quicker. Simply go to the pump, as we did before, and into the top of the Bowser. Then we need to get the Bowser to a different pump and into the sprinklers. You can pass through all of the sprinklers together, so make sure the pumps have electricity. Absolute key or they just don't work. Remember, the pumps have pump on, pump off, and a pump power. You'll need everything going into the pump power 
unless you're automating which we're not doing in this video now this is the only circuit you'll need you can make it more complicated with timer switches etc however the pump on the left when active will fill the bowser and the pump on the right when we use that will empty the bowser through the sprinklers and water the plants now speaking of plants we've got two types of plots we've got a large plot which is basically three small planters all glued together which costs 200 wood and two tarp the small costs 100 wood and one tarp unless you don't have the space you literally only need the large planters they work out cheaper in the long run and they fit together much easier to fill up a bigger space simply plonk them down i'm going to put small ones in there just to show you how they look and when you open up the planters you'll see a few empty boxes for fertilizer yeah fertilizer for this you'll need a composter which costs two tarp and 200 wood it looks like this and when you open up the cost composter you'll see 12 boxes for items to turn into fertilizer now these work similar to furnaces in the sense that you can split up the items and they'll turn into fertilizer quicker so what can you use well literally all food just put it in play the waiting game some food is better than others for example Corn gives you 0.3 fertilizer. Raw cooked and burnt chicken will give you 0.2 fertilizer. The worst things are pumpkins, potatoes, human meat, minnows, all give you 0.1. The absolute best is horse dung, and that gives you five fertilizer for everyone. Nothing even gets close to this. Oh yeah, your horse is poo now. While we're waiting for the fertilizer, I'll take you through a couple of seeds. First, the new potato seed. By far the most resilient seed, which means you can pretty much treat them like crap and they'll still grow, with 30% across the board. The other seeds like hemp, corn have far worse to plant them simply have the seeds in your hot bar you can plant three seeds in a strip the large planters hold nine plants and the small catchers hold three the seeds also consume a certain milliliter of water every minute usually five milliliter so the large planter needs a minimum of 45 milliliter of water every minute to keep the plants healthy concentrate on the things the plants need individually we'll start with the ground and the best way to improve this is with the fertilizer we spoke about earlier now don't panic if you drop a fertilizer in the planter and it disappears it hasn't bugged out it's simply already consumed it you'll need a fair bit of fertilizer to get the ground level up to a decent amount and when you drop a certain amount in some of it will automatically be consumed this is the horse dung I was speaking about and watch when I drop it in it automatically consumes around five before it stores the rest so now we've got 100% ground we need to work on the rest let's do light now there's a reason I've chosen roof slats and that's to prove a point they're good at letting smoke out from furnaces etc but they're not good at letting light in as you can can see from the light bar on the plants it reads zero percent it might look like the roof slats are letting light in but if you use them you need to stop because they simply don't work watch what happens when i destroy them it puts the light bar straight up to a hundred percent now the light bar is for individual plants and not the planters themselves you can see here that two of the plants on the left are a hundred percent light and the third plant on the right is not percent meaning it's not in a good way now don't panic you can simply use artificial lighting it makes no difference if you use artificial or natural lighting and this means you can have a hundred percent indoor plants completely safe from thieves or trollers each large planter needs one artificial light if you're not using natural light and this is enough for the 100% light. So now we have lighting out of the way and sorted, the final bar is water. Now we've already set up a mechanism for this and it's the sprinkler system. The plants are only as good as the lowest attribute and if everything's on 100% but one of the bars is on 12 for example, the plants overall will be 12%. It's important to get all of the bars up to 100% if possible to give you the best plants. And just a quick one to answer a question someone asked me in my discord. No, the sprinkler system doesn't put out fires. Well, not yet anyway. The best thing you can do in my opinion is to make sure the plots are 100% everything before you even plant a seed put some fertilizer in check the light water it you can see the water of the crop going up this is currently on 38 out of 9,000 milliliters this will give your plants the best chance of succeeding right from the get-go there's a couple of different stages of plant you've got seedling sapling mature and it'll even tell you the wield 
of certain food plants or item plants. For example, mature hemp plant will give you five cloth if I harvest it, and it'll also give the age in minutes. The most important thing is the health of the plant. If this is less than 100, then you need to take action as it'll have a large effect on the plant overall. You might have noticed the genetics box at the top, which looks kind of confusing. It's really not. Letter X is an empty attribute. Y stands for yield, so the amount of something you get from the plant. W is water. Water, G is growth and H is hardiness which means it requires less attention basically all you need to know is that green attributes are good and red attributes are bad sometimes you'll see black genetics these are the old genetics that have now been replaced if these are better it's a good idea to take a cutting from the plant so you can plant these again and get improved results. If the attributes have been replaced with worse ones, you're best off just harvesting the plant and trying again. It's trial and error. Just keep mixing the crops until you get it right. It's different for everyone. Some people prefer faster growth. Some people prefer better yield. Just experiment and see what works best for you. This plant, for example, lost its H and Y attributes and replaced them with W, which means it's going to require more water this isn't very good at all so it's best just to harvest this one i'm going to throw them both away but i'll just show you the two options so clone and replant harvest for the yield it's really that simple now if you've watched this far let me know you're a legend in the comments i hope you've learned something new and i really hope i did well enough to get a thumbs up i'll be making more rust videos so if you want to be the first to see them feel free to hit the subscribe button and if you enable the bell notification you'll get notified as soon as the new video drops if if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see what I'm working on next. And if you follow my Instagram, you'll, you'll see something special. It's the video thumbnail before the video is even released. So you know exactly what to expect. Now, I appreciate everyone that's watched. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.